Ben Lamb, Colossal co-founder, CEO. Welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for having me back, Lynn. It's good to talk to you again. <laughs> you bet. It's great to talk to you. I First, I have to show this uh, this picture of George R. R. Martin uh, with uh, the dire wolf. That is, I mean, that's brilliant. That's really brilliant. Oh, was, I mean, he, he George R. R. Martin in Game of Thrones, you know, made dire wolves popular in pop yeah. culture. Many people think they're a myth, but, you know, they were a, a an American wolf. They were the largest, strongest American wolf. And, you know, we got challenged, you know, you know, we're working on the mammoth and the Tasmanian tiger and the dodo, but we got challenged by some of our indigenous partners and the government and a few others saying, why aren't you working first on an American species? Like, why are you not <laughs> prioritizing that? So we got a lot of pressure and feedback and, and then when we when we got close to it, we were like, well, if we don't bring George R. R. Martin in, we're kind of mean because yeah. he's the guy that made him the most popular. You know, it kills me. Everybody you saw. I mean, I did the same thing. I saw the video of the, you know, the wolves howling and stuff as little babies. And I'm like, oh, that's so cute. They're an apex predator. They uh, are. They are. Been gone for now 10,000 years. Why bring them back? So Colossal is a de-extinction and species preservation company, right? And so we're going to lose up to 50% of biodiversity between now and 2050. And so we need new tools in the fight, right? We think it's better to have a de-extinction toolkit than not, than, and not need it than, you know, not have a de-extinction toolkit and need it. And so we're working on all these different species. And we started having in, uh, meetings with MHA Nation, one of the largest uh, tribal groups here in the United States. And they started giving us the feedback that, you know, uh, we need to do more for wolf conservation, not there's not enough going on with wolf conservation. It would be amazing if we could work on something like the great wolf. So then they started telling us that from their oral tradition, they believe that the great wolf was the dire wolf. And I kind of sat with you. I, I was like, oh, the Game of Thrones wolf. And, um, and so we had these great conversations. And then a few months later, we were in North Carolina and, and we learned that the most endangered wolf in the world is the American wolf. The red wolf, right. there's only 15 left. And so, like, when you think about Americana, you think about the bison, and you think about the bald eagle, and you think about wolves, it would be a travesty to lose these. And it's yeah. like, they've been on the endangered... But, but, wait, wait, but, wait, but wait, 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 oh, wait. I, I mean, I live in for half the year in a place that has mountain lions and wolves. They're both oh, yeah. very, very important to have, but they're also spooky as hell. Uh, and you're not yeah, talking about, is, I mean, you're, you're not talking about, um, preserving that species. You're, you just introduced a, a species that's been gone for 10,000 years. Yeah, we, we, we have, and they are on a secure, expansive ecological preserve in the North. And if they ever go back into the wild, it will be in collaboration with the government as well as some of the tribes. Oh. And they would go back on secure private lands. So they aren't going to be <laughs> not rewilding dire wolves. I mean, you're not going to be walking down the street worried about dire wolves. Yeah. Well, I just know last time the government got involved with wolves, it was at Yellowstone. And that didn't work out well for anybody. You no, know, rewilding, rewilding works as long as it's done thoughtfully and managed. And the problem is, is sometimes people just get so overzealous on certain sides of the table that they just go out and, you know, muck with nature. It really needs to be studied. It really needs to be uh, uh, managed. It needs to be thoughtfully taken out. But a lot of times people don't realize that and they just get overzealous, right? And they politicize it. At the end of the day, losing biodiversity it should be a bipartisan so issue, I, so, and we really need to save these animals. And so by doing what we're doing, though, Glenn, we're actually building technology to save animals. And so we were actually able to clone – no one's talking about this, which is crazy. We were actually able to clone four red wolves uh, with more genetic diversity than the existing 15 that are still left in the wild. That's a 25% bump in genetic diversity that, that has been gone – you know, for tens, you know, for, you know, over a decade. So, okay. So, um, I mean, you, you describe your company. I'm sorry. I, I love the technology. I love what you're doing. I love the way you think, no, but I'm also, it's also terrifying. We've, 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 we've yeah. talked a lot about it, right? Okay. But, yeah, I know. You know we, and in, in, on our last time we talked to you, you asked about the CIA because InQtel is an investor, but you know, synth we fall into a category called synthetic biology, right? So being able to use AI and software as well as being able to edit and rewrite genomes is really critical technology. It, it's as important as technology as space technologies and other defense related technologies. And our adversaries are advancing these technologies. Right. And so we're trying. So let, let me, because okay. I, I, 
this is like everything now, especially with AI and any of this, you know, CRISPR, all of this technology. You can't stop it. You can't put it back in the bottle uh, because others are doing it. What China is doing with this on trying to breed smarter humans, stronger humans, you know, fighters. I mean, it's it's the stuff of Nazi movies. That's what they've that's actually what they've said publicly. So everything you're saying is what they've said publicly. They said that the Beijing Genomics Institute is sequencing as many humans as possible. They use COVID as this ruse to like pull in as many samples as possible, sequencing them. And then they said, we're looking for the genes that make uh, the smartest people and we are going to engineer people. I mean, that's not even like crazy, concerned, you know, conspiracy. They have said that out loud. So what have they not said out loud? Right. Any idea what they haven't said out loud? Well, I mean, well, what I mean, if you think about like what Colossal is trying to do, right, is we're trying to at least do it. We, we don't do anything with humans. So we do uh, even though we work with the federal government, we do have this kind of moratorium that we are not working on humans, only on animals. We won't even work on, you know, uh, non-human, uh, non-human primates. So we're only working on the species that are working, but we are advancing these technologies that have applications to humans, right? And, and you know, we are understanding from like a 72,000-year-old skull what made a dire wolf bigger and stronger. It had a bigger jaw and stronger muscles and denser bones. We can now understand that with our technologies and engineer that into its closest living relative being the gray wolf, right? And so think about that same uh, type of data apply to humans, right? I think that you can look at it as, you know, adversarial countries can advance these technologies uh, in a way where they can look at how can we enhance humans. And so for us, I think we, as an American company uh, that works very, very closely with the federal government, the Secretary of Interior just endorsed our work and we work very closely with the Department of Interior. It's and not necessarily really an endorsement that, that my audience likes. You should de-emphasize that with my audience because that's <laughs> no, not, no, a, it's well, not a good I, thing. It's not, about what anyone, <laughs> it's not what anyone likes. It's just about Right. Okay. All right. right. Yeah. You good know? for you. So, good for you. Like, yeah. Like, I think it's important for us to always be, you know, Colossals, yeah, yeah. Like, we're, we're pretty bipartisan. We work with both sides. Yeah. But I do think it's important to be transparent when things happen. And, and I think that us as America has to lead in synthetic biology. And Colossal is one of the, the most advanced synthetic biology companies so in the planet. So what is the difference between directed evolution and playing God? It's a great question. You asked me this last time, right? I, I think that we as humans play God quite a bit, right? And so I'll look at it from an ecosystem's perspective. When we overfish the ocean or we cut down too much of the rainforest, we are playing God on some level when we eradicate species. But now we have these tools and technologies that we can biobank species, protect them, and even bring them back, right? And I think this is going to be really helpful for how we balance progress as well as how we balance you know, protection. And I think that we need these tools more now than ever because we could lose up to 50% of biodiversity, all life on earth between now and 2050. That's the current trend line. Uh, So, you know, AI is dangerous. It's glorious and horrifying at the same time. Just depends on, you know, who's using it and how that thing goes. Um, and it's why Elon Musk says we have to have we have to have the singularity as des, as defined as uh, human uh, computer interface. Uh, so we we merge as one. He, that's not that's something of sci fi movies. Do you believe that the genetic editing tech that you are helping to design is going to be transferred to humans? Is there a time that you think, oh, well, that's probably well, I- has to. I, I think that we will be able to look. So one of the biggest things that Colossal works on is what's called multiplex editing, being edit, being able to edit multiple parts of the genome uh, at the exact same time. Right. And so that's part of what um, uh, we really, really need to, to continue to advance, because most of these states, uh, specifically ones that drive, you know, predispositions to cancer and Alzheimer's and others are multigenic in nature. Right. And so for us, I think it's very, very important to advance those technologies so that you've probably heard about sickle cell anemia, where there's CRISPR tools and technologies that are being used to uh, uh, do a single knockout. But most genes uh, or most of these states are multigenic in nature. So you have to be able to edit multiple parts of the genome. So I do think that a lot of our technologies will be beneficial long term to helping cure uh, inherited disease states. 
in humans. And I think that's a good thing. How much of this is AI driven? Uh, I'd say 30% of our work what wouldn't be possible without AI. And uh, imagine that number is growing exponentially. I mean, I know our... Ex- exponentially, yeah. uh, exponentially. Um, you know, you named the uh, direwolves Romulus and Remus, and I'm not a mythology expert, but I do know abandoned birth, raised by wolf, founded Rome, yada, yada. But didn't Romulus also kill Remus? Yeah, we the, our, our, <laughs> Romulus loves Remus, and uh, Re, Romulus is the, Romulus is the bigger one. But they do love each other uh, uh, pretty well. So we're hoping that not all of history will repeat itself, right? <laughs> Including the fall of Rome. So we're 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 pretty uh, we're pretty bullish on that it'll work out better this round. Okay, good, good. Uh, <laughs> so am I. I guess. I, I mean, I guess we're rooting for that. All of us are together on that one. That's a great goal yeah, to we're, have. We're all we're all we're all rooting for the non-fall of Rome. What is the uh, what's the next? Thing that you can talk about that you're going to tell the world about someday. Yeah, so I mean, we're making a lot of progress. Our, our, I think we're, I think we're on the very cusp of a pretty big breakthrough for the Dodo project, right? So, talk, talk about balance going from direwolves to dodos. Um, uh, we're, you know, we made some updates on the Tasmanian tiger, another apex predator that we announced uh, last can late we, last can year. We, can we but, slow down on the apex predators <laughs> just a little they're, bit? They're very important. I mean. Well, look, elephants kill more people than wolves. No, I, last, I know. There's only been five wolf confirmed attacks in the last 100 years. You have you have a higher probability of getting struck by lightning by getting eat, while getting eaten by a shark than getting attacked by wolves. No, so, I know that. Have you ever been? Speaking. Have you ever been in the wild and a wolf? I have been in quite a bit of the wild. Yeah, with a wolf by yourself. You know, yes. a wolf walks up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. terrifying. Well, I've I've actually never been. Uh, I've been very close to wolves in certain ecological preserves. Yeah, no, like, I, I've been started. on my own land, and a wolf walks out from the bushes, and you're like, "Oh dear God," because they yeah, yeah, it's, it's, are it's spooky. It's, it's it's definitely they def it's definitely yeah. spooky, right? I'm more <laughs> yeah. scared of mountain lions than wolves personally, yeah. but um, I saw a mountain lion once. So the scariest thing I ever saw was. I was actually in Cape Tribulation in Australia once, and a cassowary, a bird, uh, walked out, and that thing's like a, a living velociraptor, mm-hmm. and that, and it was just me. I was by myself, uh-huh. and I was like, "I'm gonna die," because they're very aggressive. <laughs> they're very hard to you very uh-huh. rare to even see them. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, na- living with nature is what we got, right? We got to figure out how we do that. But our next species that we'll probably have some big updates on is the dodo. We're really close. Uh, to a fundamental step uh, in uh, the dodo resurrection. We don't have dodos. We won't for a long time. But I do think that we are pretty close to a fundamental step that we'll be able okay. to announce. One, one last thing. You you say that you, know, you are trying to help species survive because we're going to lose all these species. Why Correct. are you bringing back things like the dire wolf that humans didn't have anything to do with the extinction? Why are you bringing well, those back? So anthropologic effects, if you look at kind of the rise, if you look at kind of the uh, rapid younger driest cooling period, also compared globally, not just in America, of the rise of anthropologic effects, early humans did drive a lot of the extinction of, of megafauna here in the United States as well as, uh, as, as, well as globally. I do think that, that there's a lot of um, data that's starting to suggest some of the uh, effects of the younger driest cooling period. That was a rapid period that may have had meteor- meteorological effects right. that affected it. Right. Um, and so for us, we want to build these, we want to use these technologies uh, to bring back these species so that we can study them so that we can look to rewild them if it makes sense uh, and also pair them to build technologies for wolves, right. In the case of the dire wolf or the, or Asian elephants in the case of, of the mammoth. And one of the things that we don't, that no one really talks about is every single week we get dozens of letters from parents and kids and pictures of little woolly mammoths and dodos, hopefully now dire wolves. Um, And people are telling us and teachers are telling us that their kids are excited about science now. Right. And people are getting more and more excited about science. And so if you ask a, a peach, a teacher or a parent about colossal, Many of them know more teachers right. and parents know because their kids are telling them in the classroom. And I All think right. we need science now more than ever. And I think getting kids excited about science uh, through de extinction while also helping conservation is a really good thing. Ben, there is no better spokesperson for Colossal <laughs> than you. Colossal <laughs> co founder and CEO Ben Lamb. Thanks, Ben, for being on. I pre- Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> appreciate it. 